talking about dating. So we were talking about dating when I was when I was younger. When you wanted to ask a girl on a date, you would write her a note in class. I think some of you have been through this drill. You would you would say something like, "I like you." I think you're hot with two T's. Will you, you? Then you'd either say, "Will you? Will you date me?" or "Do you like me too?" Circle yes or no, right? And, and it was, yeah. And then they would circle or, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was always a problem. But the problem with that was it had to be passed around the room, right? We didn't know who was going to look at it. It was kind of nerve wracking, or if the teacher was going to find it and read it out loud. <laughs> yeah, the teacher checks us. I think that nowadays we should just. Um, Nowadays we should just do it on Facebook. You should just Facebook each other. Do you like me? For yes, press like. For no, comment. So, so I was I was thinking about this yesterday. I think there's a, a point in time where boys actually realize that girls exist. I think it happens. It happens for boys sometime around, you know, maybe late seventh grade, early eighth grade. But I can remember this moment for me, where um, I think guys, I think you'll totally relate to this, where um, you're sitting there and you you just like your eyes open. You're like, dude, look at her. <laughs> But you never tell any other guy that. It's just this internal moment. You refer to yourself as dude. Or dude. Whoa. Okay. And uh, girls, you're, you're more advanced than us guys. So you actually notice the opposite gender much younger. Katie tried to tell me, my wife tried to tell me it was like second grade. Um, might be true. I think girls do have crushes at very young ages. But here's what I imagine. Here's what I imagine happens to you in like sixth grade, okay? You know, you realize that the opposite gender exists and uh, this excitement wells up within you. Like it starts at your feet. I just imagine this. You gather all your friends in the bathroom and you're like, and it's like, it's just like coming up and you're like, You have to tell everyone about it. I know that that's gotta be it. Okay. So here's the deal. The church, the church really loves love, and I know that we don't. I know that this may be a message we don't get because a lot of times it's like all these rules and things that we can't do and all this stuff. Okay. But the church really loves love. This is the beginning of Song of Songs. Okay. A love poem from the Old Testament. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine, better than the fragrance of your perfumes. Your name is a flowing perfume. Therefore, lo young women love you. Draw me after you. Let us run. Okay, and then there are other things like, you will ravish my heart. Okay, all these, all these images. Okay, the church really loves love. In fact, in fact, John Paul II, who's pictured here, he wrote a huge book, okay, and, and it's all on theology of the body. And what love really means, and what love is really meant to be. And he doesn't want to just breeze over Song of Songs, for example. He doesn't want to just breeze over it. Because a lot of people say, oh, it's an allegory for the way that God loves us. But no, John Paul II says that Song of Songs is at the same time sexual and sacred. It is only by putting these two aspects together that one can read the book in the right way. Okay, the church isn't anti-sex or anti-love. He also says, he, do, he who does not believe in the human love of the spouses, he who must ask forgiveness for the body, as if the body is bad, right? That's a message we, I think, think a lot. Does not have the right to rise higher. Right? Jesus took flesh, right? That's pretty awesome. He actually took, he assumed our human nature. Why? Because our nature is horrible and it needs to be cast off and we'll just be Gnostics? No. To raise us up, okay, to rise us higher. 
With the affirmation of human love, by contrast, it is possible to discover the revelation of God in it. Okay, so human love is actually meant to reveal something about the way God loves us. Okay, the church is not anti-love. In fact, scripture from the beginning, right? In the beginning, what happens? Adam sees Eve, and he has that moment where he's like, dude, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Okay, the first love poetry. That's at the beginning, right? And all through scripture, there's this love story. Okay, how, how much God loves mankind. That he even sends his own son. That he even sends his own son to perfect his bride. Okay, So from the very beginning in Genesis, into Song of Songs, into the Gospels, and then at the end of the whole story in Revelation, what happens? There's this bride adorned for her husband, and the bride is the church. Okay, it's us. Going to meet Jesus at the wedding feast of the Lamb. The Lamb who was slain for us. Right? The church is not anti-love. But there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Okay, the media is pushing this left and right. We all know the Miley stuff that just happened. Sexting. Sexting is becoming more prominent. One in, f what is it, one in five teens has either seen it or participated in it actively. Sexting. One in five. There's this pressure that you feel to exclusively date, to casually date, to just date and then break up. Sex before marriage, those rates are very high. We know that cohabitation is almost universal. Let's just try each other out for a while. If we like it, then we'll get married. And we've got this hookup culture, all right? There's some crazy statistics. This was one of them I wanted to pull out. Among the teens who began dating in seventh grade, only 29% of boys and 10% of girls were still virgins by the time they graduated. I'm gonna read that again. Among the teens who began dating in seventh grade, only 29% of boys and 10% of girls were still virgins by the time they graduated. Here's another one. By the age of 19, seven and 10 teens have engaged in sexual intercourse. And oral sex is becoming more and more popularized, okay, which is just a really unfortunate and grotesque manipulation of the body. All right, so we live in this hookup culture, and the church wants love, not lust. The church is not anti-love. It's not about repression or suppression. The church wants to actually set love free, okay, so that it can unleash the power of God. Right, that it can make God known to the world. Okay, the family, marriage, is meant to be an icon of the Trinity. That from this love comes forth fruit. Okay, new life. So, tonight is about not settling for less, for anything less than real love. Okay, so we're going to raise a lot of big questions for you tonight to tackle and to ponder. All right, tonight is not about just coming down with a heavy hand on dating, okay? I want us to ask a really honest question, a lot of really honest questions. But I don't want to settle for anything less than love, and I don't want you to either, because we're meant for more than lust. I came across this quote from John Paul II today. Love is victorious because it prays. Okay, what happens when we pray? We come into contact with God himself who loves us. And we can only love each other because he loved us first, right? And he loved us so much that he sent his only son to bring us new life, to give us new life. All right, so as we enter into this night, we're going to open in prayer where we come into contact with love himself, truth himself. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing all of us here tonight. And Lord, I just pray that our hearts and minds will be open to understanding the ways that you have called us to love and the beauty of human relationships and the beauty of the human person. And Mama Mary, in this year dedicated to you, we want to dedicate this youth night to you. We ask for your intercession 
and your protection. As we say together, Hail Mary. Lord, grace, Lord, is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, a lot of the, the work that we're